This is it! In the hidden corners of our planet, where the ordinary ends and the extraordinary begins, humans have crafted unimaginable habitats. These places, concealed from the world, are like something out of a suspenseful adventure novel. From remote mountain villages perched so high they seem to touch the very clouds, to futuristic cities clinging to the edge of the water like scenes from a sci-fi thriller, people have found unique and unusual places to call home throughout history. These incredible places are not just about their mind-blowing landscapes. They also highlight our adaptability and struggle for survival. Join us as we explore the 20 strangest places where people actually live. Number 20. Cappadocia, Turkey The history of Cappadocia's underground dwellings dates back to the early days of civilization. People began excavating these intricate homes around the 4th century AD, primarily as a means of protection from invaders. The soft, tough rock, easily carved into caves and tunnels, allowed for the creation of elaborate underground cities, complete with living quarters, places of worship, and storage facilities. The cave dwellings exhibit remarkable architectural prowess. These caves are characterized by their honeycomb-like structures, where homes are interconnected by narrow tunnels and staircases that often feature ornate frescoes, creating an enchanting blend of natural beauty and human artistry. Some of the most famous cave cities in Cappadocia include Derinkuyu and Kaimakal, which are capable of housing thousands of people deep beneath the Earth's surface. Living in Cappadocia's underground homes presented unique advantages and challenges. The caves provide insulation from extreme weather conditions, keeping residents cool in summer and warm in winter. However, life in such close quarters demanded a communal and resourceful spirit among the inhabitants. The cave dwellers also relied on the fertile soil of Cappadocia's volcanic landscape for agriculture, adding to their self-sufficiency. Number 19. Mount Athos, Greece Mount Athos, located on a rugged peninsula in northern Greece, stands as a beacon of spiritual devotion and isolation. This remote monastic community, often referred to as the Holy Mountain, is home to a unique way of life that has remained virtually unchanged for centuries. With its rich history, breathtaking natural beauty, and unwavering commitment to solitude and prayer, Mount Athos holds a special place in the hearts of those who seek spiritual enlightenment and a connection with the divine. At the heart of Mount Athos's mystique lies its strict adherence to tradition. Only men are allowed to set foot on this sacred peninsula, a practice that has been upheld for over a thousand years. The monastic republic comprises 20 monasteries and numerous skeets, inhabited by monks who have renounced worldly possessions and distractions in pursuit of a deeper connection with God. Their lives are governed by an ascetic routine that includes prayer, work, and contemplation, all while surrounded by the serene beauty of dense forests and pristine beaches. One of the most remarkable aspects of Mount Athos is its architectural heritage. The monasteries, many of which date back to Byzantine times, are marvels of architecture and artistry. Richly adorned chapels, exquisite frescoes, and ancient manuscripts provide a glimpse into the spiritual and cultural history of this isolated enclave. Number 17, Slab City, California. Slab City is situated in the scorching heat of the California desert. This unincorporated squatter community, also known as the last free place in America, has garnered widespread fascination for its peculiar existence, drawing in individuals who seek to live off the grid and apart from mainstream society. Slab City owes its name to the concrete slabs that remain from the abandoned Camp Dunlap Marine Training Facility, upon which this eccentric community has flourished. Established in the 1940s, these slabs have since become the foundations for a variety of makeshift structures, including recreational vehicles, trailers, and art installations. While many squatter communities struggle for survival, Slab City thrives as a vibrant, albeit unconventional, oasis. What sets Slab City apart is not just its physical setting, but also its tight-knit, self-sustaining community. Although it lacks formal governance and utilities, residents have established their systems for water, electricity, and waste management. Social gatherings, art events, and the renowned East Jesus art installation have made Slab City a hub for creative expression and alternative lifestyles. For many who call Slab City home, the primary motivation is freedom. Freedom from societal norms, economic pressures, and the constraints of modern life. 
The absence of rent or mortgage payments and low living costs attract those seeking to live frugally, while the unfettered lifestyle fosters self-reliance and a strong sense of community. Number 16. The Vatican City The Vatican City, found in the heart of Rome, is one of the world's most intriguing and distinctive places. With a mere 44 hectares of land, it stands as the smallest independent state globally, both in terms of size and population. This sovereign enclave serves as the spiritual and administrative center of the Roman Catholic Church, with a rich history and a complex interplay of religion, culture, and politics. The Vatican's history can be traced back to the 4th century AD, when Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity in the Roman Empire. However, it was not until 1929, with the signing of the Lateran Treaty, that Vatican City became an independent state. This treaty established the Vatican's sovereignty and recognized the Pope as its head of state. Situated entirely within the city of Rome, the Vatican City's geographical boundaries are minimal. The state is characterized by its stunning architecture and numerous religious landmarks. Its population is equally modest, comprising around 800 residents, predominantly clergy, religious officials, and members of the Swiss Guard. It is home to St. Peter's Basilica, the largest Christian church globally, and the Vatican Museums, which house an extensive collection of priceless art and historical artifacts. Pilgrims flock to the city to witness important religious ceremonies and receive the Pope's blessings during his public appearances. The Vatican City plays a unique political role in the global landscape. It operates as an absolute monarchy, with the Pope serving as both the spiritual leader of the Catholic Church and the head of state. This duality of roles often results in complex diplomatic relations with other nations, further highlighting the Vatican's distinctive position. Number 15. Cooper Petty, Australia Cooper Petty is a remote town in the Australian outback known as the Opal Capital of the World. What sets Cooper Petty apart from the rest of the world is its unique way of life, where many residents choose to live underground to escape the region's scorching heat and unforgiving sun. The extreme temperatures of the outback, with summertime highs that can reach well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, have driven the residents of Cooper Petty underground. Here, they have transformed abandoned opal mines into cozy and comfortable underground homes. These dugout houses provide a consistent temperature shielded from both the searing heat of summer and the biting cold of winter. Visitors are often surprised to find fully furnished rooms complete with bedrooms, kitchens, and even swimming pools beneath the Earth's surface. Cooper Petty owes its existence to opal mining, and the town is home to the world's largest opal mining operations. The opal industry is the lifeblood of the community, and residents dedicate their lives to searching for this precious gemstone. Visitors can explore underground mines and witness the challenging and often rewarding work of opal miners. The town's economy revolves around this captivating pursuit, attracting gem enthusiasts and adventurers from around the globe. Despite its remote location, Cooper Petty boasts a vibrant and diverse community. People from all walks of life are drawn to this unusual place, forming a close-knit society where creativity and resourcefulness thrive. The town features unique underground churches, a golf course with sand fairways, and quirky underground art galleries. Residents celebrate their unconventional way of life with an annual festival known as the Opal Festival, showcasing local talent and welcoming visitors to experience their distinctive culture. Number 14. Casa de Peña, Portugal Casa de Peña, situated in the charming town of Sintra, just a short drive from Lisbon is often referred to as Peña Palace. It has a mesmerizing blend of romanticism and eclectic architectural elements. Constructed during the 19th century, it represents the peak of Portuguese romantic architecture, characterized by vivid colors, whimsical detailing, and a fusion of Moorish, Gothic, and Renaissance influences. Its vibrant terracotta and yellow facade, crowned with decorative turrets and spires, is a sight to behold amidst the lush, forested surroundings of the Sintra Hills. Historically, Casa de Peña has played a pivotal role in Portugal's past. Commissioned by King Ferdinand II, it served as a royal summer retreat and a testament to his passion for art and architecture. The palace's interiors are adorned with intricate tilework, opulent furnishings, and a rich collection of artwork that reflects the eclectic tastes of the monarch and his desire to create a place of unmatched beauty and cultural significance. 
Casa de Peña also carries cultural significance as a United Nations educational, scientific, and cultural organization World Heritage Site. It has become a symbol of Portuguese identity and pride, attracting tourists from around the world. The palace offers a window into the nation's history, its evolving architectural styles, and the creativity of Portuguese artisans. Number 13. Long Year Bayan, Norway. Deep within the Arctic Circle, this remote town is the northernmost settlement with a permanent population on Earth. With its unique challenges and natural beauty, Longyear Bien offers a fascinating glimpse into a life forged amidst icy landscapes and endless darkness. Longyear Bien is situated on the island of Spitsbergen in the Svalbard archipelago. Its proximity to the North Pole means that it experiences polar nights for several months of the year, with the sun never rising from November to February. Conversely, it enjoys the midnight sun from April to August, bathing the town in perpetual daylight. The town's climate is polar, characterized by frigid temperatures and extreme weather conditions. Residents must adapt to temperatures that regularly plummet far below freezing. Survival here depends on proper clothing, shelter, and a tight-knit community that supports each other through the harsh winters. Long Year Bayan's economy centers on coal mining, which has a long history in the region. However, tourism has also become a significant economic driver, with visitors coming to witness the breathtaking Arctic landscapes, go dog sledding, and experience the unique culture of the town. Despite its isolation, Long Year Bayan has a thriving community. Schools, healthcare facilities, and shops cater to the needs of its residents. The town's multicultural population, consisting of both locals and expatriates, adds a cosmopolitan touch to this Arctic haven. One intriguing aspect of Long Year Bayan is its unique legal status. It operates under Norwegian jurisdiction, but with certain distinct regulations. There is a ban on dying in Long Year Bayan due to permafrost, which prevents the decomposition of bodies. Additionally, polar bears pose a constant threat, leading residents to carry rifles when venturing outside the town limits. Number 12. The Faroe Islands the Faroe Islands are an archipelago in the North Atlantic Ocean, this remote and rugged cluster of islands, an autonomous territory within the Kingdom of Denmark, is often described as one of the most secluded inhabited places on Earth. The isolation of the Faroe Islands has profoundly shaped the lives of its residents, fostering a unique cultural identity, an unbreakable connection to nature, and remarkable resilience in the face of geographical challenges. Situated between Iceland and Norway, the Faroe Islands are characterized by their rugged terrain, dramatic cliffs, and a climate that can be harsh and unpredictable. The isolation of these islands, accessible primarily by sea and air, has historically meant limited contact with the outside world. This isolation has compelled the Faroese people to rely on their resources, forging a strong sense of self-sufficiency. The Faroese culture is a product of this isolation, with its roots deeply intertwined with the unique geography of the islands. The Faroese language, for example, has evolved independently over centuries, preserving a rich linguistic heritage. Traditional practices such as fishing and sheep farming have remained vital to the Faroese way of life, with the people's dependence on the sea and the land serving as a constant reminder of their isolation. The Faroese people have developed a deep respect for the environment, fostering sustainable practices that sustain their unique way of life. Number 11. Yakutsk. Yakutsk's most defining feature is undoubtedly its extreme climate. Located in the Saka Republic of Russia, it experiences a subarctic climate with temperatures plunging well below freezing for most of the year. Winter temperatures can plummet to as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius, and the city has even recorded temperatures as frigid as minus 64 degrees Celsius. Such brutal cold necessitates special construction techniques, with buildings often resting on piles to avoid permafrost damage. The people of Yakutsk have adapted their way of life to cope with the harsh conditions. Many homes boast thick walls and triple glazed windows for insulation, while vehicles are equipped with block heaters to ensure they start in the morning. Traditional fur clothing and layered garments are essential for venturing outdoors. Beyond its climate, Yakutsk is culturally rich, with a unique blend of indigenous Yakut traditions and Russian influences. The city celebrates its cultural heritage through events like the Isyak Festival, a summer solstice celebration featuring traditional Yakut music, dance, and cuisine. The city's museums offer insights into its history, including its indigenous peoples and the region's history of exile during the Soviet era. Number 10. The Rock Houses of Kinver, England 
Nestled in the heart of England's West Midlands, the rock houses of Kinver offer a unique blend of history, architecture, and environmental harmony. The rock houses have emerged as a remarkable cultural treasure. They bear witness to a rich history that dates back centuries. Initially, these sandstone chambers served as dwellings for the area's inhabitants, with the oldest known structures dating to the late 18th century. They were hewn into the cliffs to provide shelter from the elements, offering a practical solution to the challenges of their time. What sets the rock houses apart is their distinctive architectural design. These homes blend seamlessly into the natural rock formations, with the sandstone cliffs serving as both walls and ceilings. The interiors boast a cozy and rustic charm, with features like fireplaces and alcoves carved directly into the rock. As one explores these homes, it becomes apparent that they are not merely structures, but a testament to human craftsmanship in harmony with nature. Preservation initiatives have played a pivotal role in safeguarding the rock houses for future generations. The National Trust, a renowned conservation organization, oversees the maintenance and protection of Kinver Edge and its unique heritage. Visitors can now explore these homes as part of guided tours, gaining insight into the lives of their former inhabitants and the challenges they face. Faced. One of the most intriguing aspects of the rock houses is their environmental synergy. Their natural sandstone construction provides excellent insulation, keeping the interiors cool in summer and warm in winter. This eco-friendly design showcases how historical architectural choices can align with contemporary sustainability principles. Number 9. Atelier Village In the lush mountains of Sichuan, China, lies a village that seems frozen in time. Atelier. It is located in the remote Wuling Mountain region, isolated by rugged terrain and a lack of modern infrastructure. Accessible only by a perilous cliffside ladder known as the Sky Ladder, this isolation has preserved the village's traditions and pristine environment. The villagers of Atelier live in harmony with nature. They practice sustainable farming on terraced fields carved into the mountainsides. The lush greenery provides ample resources, including medicinal herbs and clean water from pristine streams. The villagers' deep connection to their environment is reflected in their spiritual beliefs, which revolve around the guardian mountain deity. Atelier's cultural practices are deeply rooted in their remote mountain lifestyle. They celebrate festivals with traditional music and dance, reinforcing their bonds as a community. Elders pass down oral traditions, and unique handicrafts like bamboo weaving provide both income and a sense of identity. Despite its allure, Atelier faces challenges, including limited access to health care and education. Yet these challenges have not deterred the villagers' commitment to preserving their way of life. Efforts are underway to balance modernity with tradition and to open the village to sustainable tourism that respects its culture and environment. Number 8. Villa Epequen, Argentina Villa Epequen, once a thriving lakeside resort town nestled in the heart of Argentina, is now haunted due to the unpredictable forces of nature. Located in Buenos Aires province, this once thriving community succumbed to the relentless waters of Lake Epiquen, only to re-emerge as an eerie and surreal ghost town. With its submerged history and slow process of reclamation, Villa Epiquen serves as a compelling reminder of nature's power and the resilience of the human spirit. Villa Epicuen's history dates back to the early 1920s, when it was developed as a tourist destination known for its therapeutic saltwater lake, attracting visitors from far and wide. The town reached its zenith in the 1970s, when it boasted a population of over 5,000 residents and numerous hotels, restaurants, and entertainment venues. However, a devastating flood in 1975 led to the rupture of a nearby dam, submerging the town under a torrent of salty water for nearly 25 years. Remarkably, Villa Epicuan's story did not end with its submersion. Over the years, the waters gradually receded, revealing the town's skeletal remains. Locals who had fled returned to reclaim their homes and livelihoods. The town's former residents, determined to revive their community, have since worked tirelessly to restore the infrastructure, albeit with an eerie and melancholic backdrop. Number 7. The Floating Islands of Lake Titicaca, Peru the floating islands of Lake Titicaca, located high in the Andes Mountains of Peru, are man-made islands, constructed entirely from totora reeds, and offer a captivating glimpse into a traditional way of life that has persisted for centuries in a world characterized by rapid change. The indigenous Euros people are the architects of the floating islands, and their history is deeply intertwined with these man-made marvels. Descendants of the pre-Incan Urus, 
The Euros have inhabited the Lake Titicaca region for generations. Facing threats from various Andean civilizations throughout history, they devised a brilliant solution for both defense and mobility. The Floating Islands The construction of the Floating Islands begins with a foundation of buoyant Totora reeds, carefully intertwined to form a stable base. Layers upon layers of these reeds are stacked to create a solid surface. As time passes and the reeds decompose at the base, new layers are added on top. Additionally, Totora reeds are used to build homes, boats, and even furniture. This resourceful use of natural materials is a testament to the Euro's deep connection with their environment. The floating islands serve not only as homes but also as a source of sustenance. The Euro's people fish the abundant waters of Lake Titicaca, and the reeds themselves are edible. These islands are entirely self-sufficient, producing their food and materials. However, in recent years, tourism has become an essential part of the Euro's economy, allowing visitors to experience their unique way of life and providing an important source of income. Number 6. The Lofoten Islands, Norway Nestled within the Arctic Circle, the Lofoten Islands in Norway epitomize the captivating beauty of nature and the resilience of human communities in extreme environments. These North Atlantic islands offer a unique blend of stunning landscapes, traditional fishing villages, and a way of life adapted to the northernmost reaches of Europe. The Lofoten Islands are renowned for their dramatic fjords, towering mountains, and pristine beaches. Peaks rise directly from the sea, creating a landscape that inspires awe. The play of light in this Arctic region, with the midnight sun in summer and the northern lights in winter, adds an ethereal quality to the scenery. Charming fishing villages like A, Reina, and Henningsvær are the heart of life in the Lofoten Islands. These communities have retained their traditional character, with red-painted cabins lining the shores. Fishing, the lifeblood of these villages for centuries, remains vital to their economies. Living within the Arctic Circle presents challenges such as harsh winters, extreme cold, and isolation. Yet the people of the Lofoten Islands have adapted ingeniously. Traditional fishing techniques, including stockfish drying, sustain their communities. Before we continue the video, let us have our subscribers pick for the day. Magingo Island, a small but culturally rich gem in Lake Victoria, boasts a vibrant fishing community and bustling markets that draw visitors seeking an authentic experience. Despite its modest size, the island's rustic charm and the convergence of Kenyan and Ugandan fishermen create a unique atmosphere. This interplay of cultures, set against the backdrop of serene lake waters, makes Magingo an enticing destination. In contrast, volcanic islands, formed by fiery eruptions beneath the Earth's surface, offer another kind of fascination. These islands, exemplified by the Hawaiian archipelago, showcase the dynamic geological processes shaping our planet. From molten rock to solidified landmasses, they reveal the Earth's ever-changing landscape. Share your thoughts on how you feel a volcanic island experience would be in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Number 5. Ait Benhadu, Morocco Ait Benhadu, a United Nations educational, scientific, and cultural organization World Heritage Site located in the southeastern region of Morocco, within the Atlas Mountains, this ancient Ksar stands as a beacon of historical significance and has been featured in numerous films and television series. With its labyrinthine streets, towering kasbahs, and mud-brick buildings, Ait Ben Hadou has captured the imagination of travelers from around the world. Dating back over a thousand years, Ait Ben Hadou served as a vital stop on the trans-Saharan trade routes, connecting sub-Saharan Africa to North Africa and the Mediterranean. Caravans laden with precious goods, spices, and textiles passed through its gates, leaving an indelible mark on the cultural tapestry of the region. The unique architectural style of Ait Ben Hadou is characterized by its compact, fortified structures made from adobe, mud brick, and straw. These kasbahs and homes are interconnected with a labyrinth of narrow alleys, creating an intricate and picturesque layout. The town's reddish-brown buildings blend harmoniously with the surrounding arid landscape, giving it a surreal and timeless quality. Eight Ben Hadou is not just an architectural marvel, it is a living testament to the Berber way of life. The residents, 
predominantly Berber, continue to practice age-old traditions, including artisanal crafts, pottery, and carpet weaving. Visitors can immerse themselves in this cultural heritage, gaining insight into the enduring customs and values of the Moroccan people. It has gained international recognition as a backdrop for numerous films and television series, including Gladiator and Game of Thrones. Its unique ambiance and historical authenticity make it a sought-after location for filmmakers seeking to transport audiences to distant and mystical lands. Number 4. Sealand Sealand, situated in the North Sea, has captivated the world as a self-proclaimed micronation. Originally built as a British naval defense platform during World War II, Sealand's history took an extraordinary turn in 1967, when Roy Bates declared it the Principality of Sealand, establishing it as a sovereign nation. However, Sealand's legal status remains contentious. While its rulers assert sovereignty, the British government and most of the international community do not officially recognize it as an independent nation, creating a unique legal conundrum. This ambiguity has given rise to Sealand's cultural appeal, inspiring book, documentaries, and even a computer game. Its story resonates with those championing individual freedom and resistance against established authority. Number 3. The Remarkable Tree Houses of Korowai, Indonesia Deep in the remote rainforests of Papua, Indonesia, the tree houses of Korowai showcase human ingenuity and adaptation. These extraordinary dwellings perched high in the canopy offer a unique window into a centuries-old way of life. The Korowai people, known for their tree house villages, have crafted these structures from bamboo, palm leaves, and other natural materials, tethering them to towering trees reaching up to a hundred feet. These tree houses have historical and cultural significance, serving both as homes and fortifications against their challenging rainforest forest environment. The Korowai have inhabited these tree houses for generations, displaying their resourcefulness and resilience. Their architectural marvels are engineered to withstand heavy rains, floods, and hostile wildlife. Each tree house typically consists of a single room with a thatched roof, accommodating entire families. Bamboo ladders and bridges form an intricate network high above the forest floor, connecting these homes. These tree houses are not just shelters, they symbolize a profound connection between the Korowai tribe and the natural world. Their reliance on the rainforest for sustenance, gathering food, medicine, and building materials underscores their cultural identity. Living among the trees is not merely a choice, it is an integral part of their way of life. However, as the modern world encroaches upon their isolated communities, challenges of preservation arise. Increased contact with outsiders brings concerns about cultural erosion and the sustainability of their traditional lifestyle. Striking a balance between preserving their unique, cultural heritage and embracing the benefits of modernization poses a complex challenge for the Korowai. Number 2. The Floating Village of Ganvi, Benin The floating village of Ganvi, found in the heart of Benin's Lake Nokue, is a remarkable testament to human adaptability. Home to approximately 3,000 people, Ganvi stands as one of the world's most distinctive settlements, where life revolves around water. Its origins trace back to the Tofinu people, who sought refuge on the lake to escape the Dahomey Kingdom's slave raiders in the 18th century. The lake's waters provided natural protection, and the Tofinu adapted by constructing homes on stilts. Over the centuries, Ganvi transformed into a thriving community that relies on fishing, trade, and tourism. Homes in Ganvi are built on wooden stilts, creating a mesmerizing maze of interconnected walkways and canals. Each household owns a dugout canoe, the primary mode of transportation within the village. The houses, painted in vibrant colors, appear to float on the water, giving Ganvi its nickname, the Venice of Africa. Number 1. Antelope Canyon, USA Antelope Canyon, located in the heart of the American Southwest, is a geological wonder that has captivated the world with its ethereal beauty. In the Navajo Nation in Arizona, this narrow sandstone slot canyon has become an iconic symbol of nature's artistry. Antelope Canyon's distinctive allure lies in its sinuous passageways, sculpted by millennia of wind and water erosion. The Navajo name for the canyon, Tse Bighanalini, translates to the place where water runs through rocks, 
underscoring the profound influence of water in shaping its contours. Over countless years, flash floods and relentless winds have meticulously carved out the smooth, flowing lines and unique undulations that make Antelope Canyon a photographer's dream. The canyon is divided into two sections, Upper and Lower Antelope Canyon, each with its distinctive charm. Upper Antelope Canyon, with its wider passages, is famous for its breathtaking beams of sunlight that penetrate the narrow openings, creating a mesmerizing play of light and shadow on the smooth sandstone walls. Lower Antelope Canyon, on the other hand, offers a more intimate experience, with narrower passageways and a greater sense of exploration as visitors navigate through its twisting corridors. Visiting Antelope Canyon is a sensory experience unlike any other. The interplay of light and stone produces a symphony of colors, with shades of red, orange, purple, and pink seemingly dancing on the canyon walls. As visitors wander through the cool, dimly lit chambers, they are enveloped in a tranquil ambiance that feels almost spiritual. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.